Hi, my name is Tori and I am a doctor of physical therapy who specializes in pelvic dysfunction, which means I treat things that can go wrong around the pelvis. Today, I want to do a request video all about treating hemorrhoids, internal or external, naturally at home. Before we get started, two important things to consider. Thing number one, if you are suspecting that you have a hemorrhoid but you haven't gotten that formal diagnosis from your physician, I highly recommend that you go see your doctor, get an assessment, and get the actual diagnosis of a hemorrhoid. As silly as that sounds, rectal bleeding can also be a sign of colon polyps, and colon polyps, while usually harmless, can sometimes be cancerous. And so I highly, highly recommend that you go get the formal diagnosis of a hemorrhoid from your physician. Second thing that I think is helpful is that a physician can tell you if your hemorrhoid is too severe to treat naturally at home. I think a good rule of thumb is if you can lightly touch the hemorrhoid without excruciating pain, it is probably going to respond well to a natural conservative at-home remedy. However, there are some hemorrhoids that are just a little bit too far along to respond well to natural treatment. My intention in making this video is for you, the viewer, to have the knowledge that you need in order to not only treat a hemorrhoid if you have one, but also prevent future hemorrhoids from occurring. In order to fully understand treatment and prevention, you need to know what a hemorrhoid is and what causes a hemorrhoid. So in this video, we are gonna be discussing four major topics. What is a hemorrhoid? What causes hemorrhoids? How do I treat an enlarged, inflamed, irritated hemorrhoid? And how do I prevent future hemorrhoids from occurring? You can check the description for timestamps if you wanna jump around and let's dive in. So our first topic, what is a hemorrhoid? Here's the thing about hemorrhoids. Everyone has them. A quick anatomy review, remember that the anus, your anal canal, is the very end of your digestive tract. So after you eat food, it goes in your mouth, it goes down your esophagus, it goes into your stomach, it then travels through the small intestines and the large intestines where it's digested, and then the waste, the feces, the poop, the stool, the leftover stuff that our body doesn't need after it makes its way through the large intestine ends up in the rectum. Then when you have a bowel movement, that stool travels from the rectum through the anal canal and then out into the world. So then if we zoom into the rectum and the anal canal, you can almost imagine a wine glass where the anal canal is like the stem of the wine glass and the actual rectum where you're storing the poop until you have a bowel movement is kind of like where you'd pour the wine. You can think of hemorrhoidal tissue as little pockets of blood vessels and connective tissue. They are located actually inside the stem, like actually inside the anal canal and then they're also located actually around the skin of the anus or said another way they are located under the skin around the butthole. Hemorrhoidal tissue is considered to be part of normal human anatomy. It probably aids in fecal continence which just means your ability to control when you do and don't poop or said another way your ability to make sure that you don't accidentally leak stool or leak poop. That being said, it isn't until hemorrhoidal tissue is irritated, inflamed, and enlarged that someone has symptoms and is said to have hemorrhoids. While there is more background that I could provide on hemorrhoids, I do think that that is enough of a background to move into the next topic. So what causes hemorrhoids? Like we said, everybody has hemorrhoidal tissue. Usually that tissue becomes irritated, inflamed, and enlarged due to applying to too much pressure in the lower rectum and the actual anal canal, or too much pressure in the lower part of the wine glass and the actual stem of the wine glass. Imagine hemorrhoidal tissue like a balloon. If you apply too much pressure at one end of the balloon, you might get a little like out pocket on the other end of the balloon. That's what's going on with a hemorrhoid. It's literally swollen tissue. So what causes too much pressure at the lower end of the rectum and in the anal canal? a few things. Straining is usually a huge culprit. And when I say strain, I mean the inhale, hold your breath, 
and push down like one of these. If you have chronic constipation or chronic diarrhea, chances are high that you are straining every time you have a bowel movement. Straining can also happen from chronic heavy lifting. Heavy lifting at home, heavy lifting at your job, or heavy lifting at the gym, part of your exercise routine. If you aren't managing your breath well, chances are you might be inhaling, holding your breath, and bearing down when you lift something like this in order to accomplish the movement. And that puts a lot of pressure in your lower rectum and your anal canal. Pressure buildup can also happen from sitting on the toilet too long after you've had a bowel movement. So if you're someone who sits on the toilet, has a great bowel movement, and then just kind of hangs out and like scrolls through your phone or reads a book, that sort of thing. When you relax like that on the toilet, your anus is very, very relaxed and blood flow goes into those vessels and just the very act of that prolonged relaxation and that prolonged blood flow buildup can cause pressure in the lower rectum and the anal canal as well. And finally, pregnancy can cause quite a bit of pressure buildup by the very nature of carrying the extra weight of a baby. The takeaway is this, hemorrhoids need irritation to exist. If we can address the irritating stimuli, like maybe remove chronic straining and take really good care of the enlarged and inflamed tissue for like three to four weeks as it heals, we can treat hemorrhoids and we can prevent future hemorrhoids. Which leads us nicely into our third topic, how to naturally treat hemorrhoids at home. Healing an irritated enlarged hemorrhoid is going to take two to four weeks. Do not give up if you don't start seeing improvement until about the third week or so. Commit to what is outlined in this video for four weeks and your hemorrhoid, internal or external, should get better. As we just said, we're coming at this treatment kind of through two different lenses. One lens is taking really good care of that irritated tissue, and another lens is removing the irritating stimuli. One of the most important tools in taking really good care of that irritated tissue is to have some sort of protectant barrier ointment. Some people like to use preparation age, but other people gravitate more towards natural protectant barriers like coconut oil or petroleum jelly. What I will say is, if you're someone who gravitates more towards the over the counter ointments like Preparation H, read the ingredients and just make sure that you aren't using something with a steroid, usually it's hydrocortisone, for more than a week at a time. There are a lot of Preparation H formulas available now, but the original formula I'm pretty sure does not have steroids in it. Whatever feels right for you and your body is fine. I just recommend taking whatever it is that you choose, whether that's coconut oil, Preparation H, or somewhere in between. I recommend taking that ointment and rubbing it on the underside of your forearm just to make sure that you don't have some sort of reaction to it before you apply it on and around your hemorrhoid. As a side note, if you have a deeper hemorrhoid, if your hemorrhoid is an internal hemorrhoid, you might be better off using suppositories instead of some sort of ointment cream. Preparation H makes suppositories, but if you're someone who prefers the more natural route, you can make your own suppositories at home with an oil. Once you've decided on your barrier ointment of choice, you can move on to the next step. And I think that this step is super important, both through the lens of being really kind to that irritated tissue and also through the lens of removing irritating stimuli. And this next step is your bowel movement toilet routine. So let's break that down. Thing number one with your new bowel movement toilet routine is before you have a bowel movement, you are going to apply that barrier ointment both on the hemorrhoid and actually up inside of the anal canal. If you are someone who has an internal hemorrhoid, then use a suppository. This way, the actual act of pooping itself is much less irritating to the hemorrhoid. We want the poop to just glide out. Thing number two, you want to be sitting on the toilet correctly. I have a different video up all about this. I'll link to it and I'll also put a link in the description below. But long story short, there's an angle that feces has to travel when it's moving from your rectum into your anal canal and then out into the world. If you can imagine rectum, anal canal, and then 
out. When you are sitting, that angle is more acute. And when you squat, that angle is almost a straight line. And we want your poop to be going straight down the chute so as to be less irritating to the hemorrhoid. Thing number three, after you are finished pooping, do not use toilet paper. You have a couple of options, but don't use toilet paper. Option one, you can get some medicated wipes. I know Preparation H makes them where the main ingredient is witch hazel, which is an astringent that can really help with inflammation. You could potentially use water if you're okay with that, just splashing some water around the rectum and then either patting yourself dry, but not patting dry the hemorrhoid, let the hemorrhoid just air dry. Or if you have a lot of time, you can let your whole body air dry, whatever floats your boat. You could also use baby wipes. I just want you to be using something that is kind and more moist rather than something that is dry and a little bit more irritating like toilet paper. This last step is for someone that has a hemorrhoid that you can see, a hemorrhoid where the irritated tissue is actually protruding. One thing that I think can be really, really helpful is soaking that tissue, especially after bowel movements. There is a contraption called a sitz bath that essentially just allows you to soak your buttock in warm water but if you don't have a protruding hemorrhoid if you can't see that irritated tissue then a sitz bath or a warm water soak really isn't as effective so for those of you that do have a hemorrhoid where you can actually see that irritated tissue if you can swing it taking a sitz bath after your bowel movements is really really awesome you can totally add Epsom salt if you want to or if you have even more time you could actually draw yourself a warm water bath, add Epsom salt if you want, and just sitting and soaking for like 10 to 15 minutes after the bowel movement can be incredibly helpful. If you don't have time, that's okay. If you are a human at your workplace and you can't just take 10 or 15 minutes sits bath, that's fine. Don't use toilet paper, follow the instructions that we just went over, and save the sits baths for when you're at home. After you are done with your bowel movement, whether you took a sits bath or not, reapply your protectant ointment of choice and move on with your day. Another really important step in taking care of that irritated tissue, if you do have a protruding hemorrhoid, like you can actually see the irritated hemorrhoidal tissue, is soaking in warm water at least three times a day. You can add Epsom salt if you like, but that warm water soak can be really, really soothing and helpful for that irritated tissue. So if you can swing it, I recommend soaking in that warm water in the actual sitz bath or an actual bath is also fine just a warm water soak three times a day if you can swing it after bowel movements that's even better but it's okay if you can't and again if you do not have a protruding hemorrhoid if you can't see that irritated hemorrhoidal tissue just don't worry as much about the sitz baths other important parts of healing through the lens of eliminating irritating stimuli one thing is look at the consistency of your poop are you someone who has chronic constipation or chronic chronic diarrhea and is that why you ended up with a hemorrhoid in the first place? Maybe you can use some increased fiber or even a stool bulker like Metamucil or psyllium husk to improve your stool consistency. On a scale from liquid to pellets, that stool consistency that's somewhere in the middle, that banana, sausage, snake-like consistency is really, really healthy in general, but also really much easier on irritated hemorrhoidal tissue. This is why a lot of the quick fixes online boast carrots. They'll be like, eat a bunch of raw carrots or drink carrot juice. It's because carrots are really, really high in fiber and they can improve stool consistency pretty quickly. So after aiming for that more solid stool consistency, another really important thing to look at is water. Are you hydrated? Is your stool consistency poor because you're dehydrated? I recommend staying very, very well hydrated while you are trying to heal a hemorrhoid and always, but a especially when you're trying to heal a hemorrhoid Thing number three, what kind of underwear are you wearing? Wear loose-fitting, cotton, easy underwear. Be kind to that irritated skin. Thing number four, while you are healing, try to avoid prolonged sitting. Can you work at a standing desk? Can you take little stand walk breaks every hour or so throughout your day? Can you do something to decrease the amount of time that you are sitting? Because that will be very helpful while you are trying to heal your hemorrhoid. Lastly, 
if you are someone who is heavy lifting, whether that's at home, at work, or in the gym, can you either decrease your exposure to the more straining, like grunting activities where you have to do this or like, ugh, that kind of thing? Or if you can't decrease your exposure, can you be really, really mindful of your breath? Straining is almost always the following sequence of events. You inhale, hold your breath, and then bear down and put a lot of downward pressure into that lower rectum and anus. If you can think about mindfully exhaling as you exert, like let's say you're about to lift something up, think about can I inhale, exhale, and while I exhale, maintain that exhalation as I lift up the heavy thing. That's a really easy way to kind of activate your deeper core and give you a little bit more protection and less pressure down towards the lower rectum and the anal canal. Follow these guidelines for three to four weeks and your hemorrhoid internal or external should heal, but it's going to take some commitment. To do a quick recap of everything that was just shared, thing number one is you need some sort of barrier ointment or barrier suppository. Thing number two, you need a bowel movement routine that includes proper toilet positioning and one that does not use toilet paper. Thing number three, if you have a protruding hemorrhoid, if you can see that irritated hemorrhoidal tissue, start taking some warm water bath, start soaking your buttocks in warm water at least three times a day, and after bowel movements, if you can swing it, maybe look into getting a sitz bath. Thing number four, being mindful of your stool consistency, aiming for that more solid banana sausage snake-like stool consistency. Thing number five, loose-fitting cotton comfortable underwear. Thing number six, can you avoid prolonged sitting while you're trying to heal? And finally, thing number seven, if you are heavy lifting, if you are straining throughout your day and you can't decrease your exposure to that activity, can you be mindful of your breath? Can you exhale while you exert? Phew, okay. Let's talk about the final topic, which is how to prevent future hemorrhoids. Here's the thing about hemorrhoids, and I feel like this can be a harder pill to swallow sometimes, but with the exception of pregnancy, hemorrhoids are a lifestyle disease. Your digestive system is a smooth and efficient machine. Hemorrhoids are a sign from your body that something that you are doing isn't working well for your system. If you want to truly prevent future hemorrhoids from occurring, you have to accept personal responsibility for them and commit to behavioral changes to prevent them. Otherwise, whether you heal them naturally or you get them removed surgically, it doesn't matter they will come back. So after you've healed your hemorrhoid, there are a few things that I do recommend for prevention of future hemorrhoids. One, identify what it is that caused the hemorrhoid in the first place. Is it constipation? Is it diarrhea? Is it a lot of heavy lifting at work or in the gym? What happened to cause the hemorrhoid? Thing number two, make sure that you are staying well hydrated. Make sure that you are eating a good, healthy diet. If there are trigger foods, for instance, that you know make you constipated and bloated, or you know give you diarrhea, maybe try eliminating those foods. Or if you figured out that supplementing keeps you regular, if taking a stool balker regularly, or Benefiber, or something of that nature, keeps you regular and gives you those nice banana sausage snake-like stools, then kudos, continue doing that. Thing number three, continue to position yourself properly on the toilet when you are having a bowel movement. Thing number Number four, once you are done pooping after you've had your bowel movement, get up and carry on with your day. Do not sit on the toilet for a prolonged period of time scrolling through your phone or reading a book like we talked about. That position makes the anus relax and that brings a lot of blood into those vessels, which can over time really increase that pressure and cause another hemorrhoid. Thing number five, don't use toilet paper. If you can swing it, try using baby wipes instead or even just a little bit of water. Splash yourself with water, pat dry, call it good. Thing number six, check in with yourself. How much are you moving throughout the day and how much are you sitting? Prolonged sitting is definitely an increased risk factor for developing hemorrhoids. So even if it's just an extra 15 minute walk throughout the day, using a standing desk, setting really kind, gentle alarms throughout the day that just remind you to stand up, move, walk around, anything like that, it might seem like a really small adjustment, but it can be really helpful. Finally, thing number 
number seven, exhale when you exert. If you are heavy lifting, again, whether that's your job, that's something at home, or it's a form of exercise that you really love, make sure you can breathe. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Again, I can't tell you how excited I am and how honored I feel to be doing request videos and how excited and honored I am to be building a platform here on YouTube. Please, if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, share it, and feel free to comment in the comment section questions, your personal experiences, or content suggestions. I try really, really hard to read and respond to all of my comments, and I am very, very open to requests. Subscribe to my channel for more content surrounding pelvic health. Check me out on Instagram, and thank you again so, so much for watching. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.